Stephen Brooks, and welcome today to Morning Glory. I'm so happy that you're here. Why don't you take your Bibles and meet me today in the book of Romans, chapter 8. And let's drop down to verse 31 today, and let's talk about painting an image on the inside of us. Praise God. Let's open up with prayer. Heavenly Father, as we jump into your word, we ask that your Holy Spirit would come and illuminate the scriptures and bring forth the image that you would have us paint on the inside of our hearts. Thank you, Father. We give you the praise in Jesus' name. We all agree and say, Amen. Now, Romans chapter 8, verse 31 says, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He, this is verse 32, He who did not spare His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all, how shall He not with Him also freely give us all things. Now that's an amazing verse. I really thought about the title for this message. I wasn't sure to call it Painting on the Inside, which I really liked, and I feel that's the main thrust. But I, I was also thinking this message has a lot to do with um, just the understanding that God is saying yes to so many things that you want to see happen in your life. And God's not saying no. Now the devil would say no. But I believe there, there are so many things that God has put in your heart for you to do. And God is behind it. And somebody might say, well, Pastor Stephen, God doesn't want me to have that. Well, again, it's what Paul said, that if God the Father gave you His own Son, now if He gave Jesus to you, I mean, how much more willingly would He give your child a college ed education? How much more willing would He be knowing that He gave Jesus to you, His most valuable, precious possession, His own Son? How much, how much easier would it be for God to give you a good job? Maybe you're watching today, and maybe you are looking for a new job. Maybe you're in a transition between work. Maybe you got laid off or something like that. Uh, or just it was just time for a change to go on to something else. How much easier can God give you a job knowing that He gave you Jesus? Well, Pastor Stephen, you don't understand. I, I don't have all the qualifications and this and that. Now, I, und I, I do know that qualifications can play a role, but not always. And so many times, God's people, they paint a negative image on the inside where they say, I can never get a really good paying job. And thus, on the inside, they really expect to stay stuck in a certain financial strata. They, they actually expect on the inside to kind of be in a rut where they, they can never get into those other areas. But I really want you to do some painting today and onward in the coming days on the inside of your heart and paint an image knowing that if God gave to you Jesus how much more would he give you for instance a good job you know I was talking to one of my family members uh, recently and he said uh, he said to me I won't say who it is unless somebody tried to call him and uh, uh, you know apply but he said <laughs> He said, Stephen, you wouldn't believe some of the people they hire at my job that are totally unqualified. Uh, uh, you know, and he works for a big corporation, and, you know, he's, he's climbed the ladder, so to speak. But he said, he said, even at the very lowest level of the company that I work for, he said, there are no jobs that pay less than $100,000. They're, they're at least $100,000, and usually they start up way above that and go up real fast. And he said, I can't believe some of the people they hire sometimes that, that have, they don't have the qualifications, they don't have the training, they don't re even have the skills that you would think, hey, let's plug them into there. And he said, they get hired anyhow. Now, let me ask you a question. If people are out there who are probably, you know, not even covenant people, not even children of God, yet somehow they have an anticipation that lock hold of a good job and they get one. Now, how much more should you as a child of God, a covenant child of God, who has, uh, you know, 
promised blessings and you know you're washed of your sins how much more should you get a good job well pastor Stephen I'm not qualified well maybe I should just do a little repainting and that you know there's a lot of people out there who are not qualified who are landing big jobs big paying jobs all the time every single day well that's not fair they don't deserve that you know I, I'm not here to debate that I'm just saying it's happening it's happening all the time and you know with the economy of America so strong right now uh, you know you know employers are really looking you know to hire people and so I'm just saying if you need a job you're, you're actually in a really good boat because there are companies out there they, they need people and when there's a need and you you know everybody else is working and there's not that many potential uh, you know people that you can pull up on you know I tell you what they throw a lot of bonuses in and all kinds of stuff like that I, I shared the story before but it was a couple of years back when the army was recruiting you know for new new soldiers come join the army and there wasn't much of a response until they started throwing in these hefty bonuses and they would give you up front uh, I mean it went all the way up to ninety thousand dollars sign on bonus just just for joining you haven't even you know like uh, iron things out with your you know what your pay is going to be and what you what you're going to your position is what you're going to be doing and stuff like that but just up front sign on bonus without having done anything ninety thousand dollars cash so I'm just saying that you know paint an image on the inside that there there's a good place that God has for you because remember if God the Father gave you Jesus how much more will he not also give you everything else that you need in life all of that stuff is easy compared to uh, God giving you Jesus again verse 32 he who did not spare his own son but delivered him up for us all how shall he not with him also freely give us all things I need to let you know today that all things are yours would you would you please just paint that on the inside find the vibrant color and paint that on the inside and just you know that way you can say hey I can have that well who do you think you are well I think I'm a child of God if God gave me Jesus he could certainly give me that <laughs> I mean what is that compared to Jesus so th this is just uh, what I'm talking about painting on the inside I'm talking about yes a mindset but more of a heart condition the way that you in your heart the way that you filter things and I'm talking about filtering things through the Word of God and when you do that you'll begin to think different you'll be th you begin to think like God does and you really step into that statement where Paul said that we have the mind of Christ what does that mean well it's not like a religious theological statement it just means that you begin to think like Jesus the, his way of thinking his way of thinking that begins to become your way of thinking and that really is a product of washing your mind with the Word of God and you know what it'll start to really work with your thought processes and your heart in your believing in your heart that yes God can do this for me also why not I mean he gave me Jesus and so I just want you to be begin to do some beautiful painting on the inside um, whenever you see certain types of ideologies in the earth like I would call them the isms whether it's socialism or you know communism when whenever you look at those things what you'll notice is lack of color you know um, look at some uh, at what some of the leaders of communist countries wear why ask yourself this question why is what they're wearing why is it always grayscale okay if you look at the president of China look what he's wearing why is it always grayscale clothing look at the guy in you know North Korea how come he's always wearing the same thing with the same non-color why is there such an absence of color such an absence of illumination why well th that's because what's on the heart of you what's on the inside is going to be what's reflected on the outside praise the Lord and the more of the knowledge of God's Word that you have and your mind washed with that word the more the more colorful and the more experiential your life becomes rich in Christ who praise the Lord you can take an old house and you know paint the inside paint the outside and it's just mind-boggling what new paint can do I mean it's absolutely incredible people can look at a house you know if you uh, 
you know, replace the gutters. Maybe the, the shingles need to be replaced on the roof or something like that. But you start painting. And you take off that old flaky paint and, you know, fix the wood up and stuff like that and put new paint on it. I tell you, it's just, it's amazing that the value of that home will go up overnight. Same way with the inside. You know, if there's old wallpaper or old weary uh, drab paint, you just take that stuff, you know, take the wallpaper down and uh, take that old paint and get some primer up there and, uh, you know, again, get something that's beautiful and nice and clean and modern. I tell you what, the value of that home will just start to go up immediately just by painting the the color something that's fresh and clean and new praise the lord so on the inside we need to have the right image is very very important because your outside is determined by the way that you filter things on the inside mm. some people they like poverty it's very bizarre it's a twisted way of thinking it is a darkened understanding within their heart and they like uh, cheap stuff, even if it falls apart and they curse it because it's, you know, cheaply made, then they've got to go out and buy another one. But the thing is, there's a part of that they actually like. So as you begin to wash with the Word of God, you wash all of that dirt off of your soul. Uh, your heart begins to get illuminated as to what is pure and holy and clean. And this is very important. Don't ever forget that the wealthiest place in the universe is also the holiest place in the universe and that's heaven a lot of people still they have a they have a heart they have a heart concept that poverty is associated with holiness but I've been to the I've been to some of the poorest places in the world because I've been privileged by the Lord to travel all over the planet and oftentimes I see these greatly impoverished places I see sin just running like crazy everywhere sin 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 and, uh, you know, the, the people may be sweet that are stuck in places like that, but oftentimes they don't know the Lord. They're in spiritual darkness. They're in spiritual ignorance. And when the gospel comes, it begins to turn around every facet of a person's life. Woo! Praise God. So the Word of God will clean us up and will help us to get the right color of paint, the fresh paint on the inside. Now, let's move over to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse, verse 21. The Apostle Paul said, Therefore, let no one boast in men. Well, he is kind of bringing together some previous thoughts that he had presented to the church there in Corinth. Basically, were some, some were saying, hey, I'm of, a, I'm of Paul. Others were saying, no, I'm in the Apollos group. Others were saying, no, Peter's my guy. And, you know, they all had their, you know, how can we say, denominational champion, so to speak. And, and then there's also a lot of talk in this chapter about the wisdom of God as contrasted with the so-called wisdom of the world, which is already passing off the scene. The wisdom of God will always stand. It's always eternal. And so he says here in verse 21, Therefore, let no one boast in men, for all things are yours. Please take your paintbrush today, and with the help of the Holy Spirit, paint that on the inside of you with something fluorescent, maybe bright orange, maybe how about some, how about some uh, lime-colored uh, fluorescent lime. Paint on the inside of you, all things are yours. Well, you can't have that. Well, who says? Who says I can't have that, especially when the Scripture says, all things are yours. Woo! Now, I know that as mature believers in the Lord, we're not running around trying to grab a hold of everything underneath the sun. We're really trying to stay on track. We're trying to stay focused on the specific path and destiny that God has for us as the church and also as individuals. But I just want you to know that there is leeway along that journey for you to gather blessings, for you to uh, gather, uh, you know, concepts and new ideas and biblical ways of thinking along the journey, because Paul said, all things are yours. And that includes Peter. 
that includes the teachings of Paul that includes you know having a good relationship with Apollos it includes everything it includes uh, tapping into the wisdom of God everything that Paul talked about here he said hey it's all yours you know it's not like hey you can't talk to Apollos only my groups are allowed to talk to me and only his uh, no he said hey we're all available for you all the saints say hey, if you want access if you got got their books read them listen to their CDs or whatever anything that can help you along with your journey in the Lord and anything that you need God has it ready for you and again I'm just here to tell you today that God's not saying no if it's along that path and along the journey and something that God has put in your heart is part of your spiritual DNA you know God's not saying no he's just saying go for it I've got it for you now we understand that it does take faith it does take patience many of these things don't happen overnight but just because they don't happen uh, happen over overnight doesn't mean that God's saying no it just means that you're on the journey that will come the time when the, its manifestation just stay on it in faith keep working it as a faith project and keep painting on the inside the right image see yourself in that see yourself doing that see yourself being a part of that and you know what you're going to end up in that place I uh, I shouldn't have been shocked but I've been shocked sometimes at the places I've ended up in the sense that I thought this is wild this is God but the whole time it now it took uh, sometimes it would take like three or four years when I could see something spiritually and start moving towards it sometimes it would take three four years some other things that were very important a little longer but you know uh, those years went by and you know I found myself standing in those places that at one point would have seemed like just like a distant dream but you know what I actually have lived the reality of dreams and that's and those were things that God had for my life planned for my life and there's more and I'm moving towards those I'm painting the right image so I can step into those things as well but my friends you need to paint that image that the Holy Spirit gives you sometimes when you're in prayer you you see yourself doing things you get over deep in prayer and you'll see yourself doing things and you'll think could it be I'm here to, to tell you today yes it could be and yes it can be and by God's grace and you're uh, sticking with it yes it will be hallelujah praise God so keep painting keep painting that image uh, you know you'll have those around you that don't want to paint anything except what we would call normality and I'm not saying that everybody has to swing for home runs all the time and knock the ball out of the park every time not everybody has to be some kind of like epic person where you're the next Elon Musk okay what I'm trying to say though however is that God does have an amazing plan for your life it is up there and it will make an impact within your sphere of life okay within your sphere of influence and you're called to move into that and you can't you can't get into that with an image of you know like a chicken being painted on the inside you have to have that image of the eagle you have to be willing to soar you have to be willing in your heart and in your mind to say I not only can but by God's grace I will and you need to say I belong there praise the Lord well I, I don't know Pastor Stephen well then you need to stay in, in the word until you know praise God and get convinced in here with the word by painting that image on the inside and then uh, you'll you'll get there you'll feel quite comfortable now those places I stepped into I told you some of them were shocking they were shocking in the sense that hey like wow it happened but at the same time I felt totally comfortable when I actually did get there I felt I, I never felt out of place at all I never felt like hey this is beyond me I felt like hey yeah this is exactly where I'm at I'm right on time I want to enjoy it praise the Lord and I certainly did and when things like that happen I you know you always want to just enjoy uh, your moments in the Lord praise God but I tell you my friends paint on the inside the right image and you know get some colors out get some bright colors and uh, you know if you if you see something that is part of your destiny part of your spiritual DNA maybe you see it in the catalog maybe you see it on a magazine then get some scissors and cut it out praise God and uh, keep it close to you uh, I have my my briefcase uh, close to me over here which I whenever I'm you know traveling going to the office and things like that I have my Bible I have my notepads and stuff like that but I've also got my files and my folders and inside of those files uh, on each file is the subject listed the of what that focus is and, all, and in there you better believe it I've got pictures I've got articles I've got teaching on that subject uh, I've got uh, I've got manuals on that subject Woo! praise the Lord now remember also 
It says in the book of Proverbs that good understanding brings favor. What does that mean? It means that if you know God has a plan for you to stand in a certain circle, in a certain arena of, of influence, or in a certain place that maybe you're not there yet, but you're going that direction, you need to be able to talk that language. Because when you get in there, those conversations that those people in that group they talk about you need to be able to uh, to hang with them and if you can't you're going to be an oddball out so good understanding brings it will bring favor I have a friend of mine he started a, a satellite television network and you know in the early days now, now today it's all over the world you know with all kinds of satellites all over the world and no telling how many people are watching it's it's in the millions and millions of people and I've been privileged to be on that satellite. Somebody just told me that many of my programs are, are still airing, particularly over in Europe. But this, this minister told me, he said, Stephen, he said, I went to one of these big national meetings where all of the big wigs go to in America. Now, my friends, he's overseas, but anybody that has anything to do with television and the media industry Every year in Las Vegas, they have the big event where they bring out all of the latest cameras, all of the latest equipment, technology, anything having to do with broadcast media. You know, it's all going to be there, and the who's who are there. And he realized, you know, hey, you know, this is a field God's plugged me into, and I'm kind of like starting to get my feet wet, so I need to go there. So he told me that he went. Uh, this was like the first time he ever went, and while he's there, and he's in one of these, uh, you know, it's a giant convention center. But, you know, still, people have to get into smaller rooms when something is being unveiled to present it, like a new camera or something that, like that, or new technology. So he ends up in one of these rooms with only a couple hundred people in there. And most of the people in there were, were executive Hollywood producers and stuff like that. And so he kind of bumps into somebody just a little bit. And he turns around and is a very famous, one of the most famous movie producers in the world. And they struck up a little conversation and uh my so my friend uh he's trying to like you know hang in in the conversation and that that producer asked him a question he said what do you think about this and mentioned a certain type of product uh and you know specifications on that product with which had to do with television and he said um he said my friend said i don't know he said i i, I don't know about that and he said he'll never forget it he said that producer looked at him and said well, if you don't know about this, he said, what are you even doing here? <laughs> Woo! So he, he left that, 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 you know, conference, and he went back to his hotel room, and he said, Lord, if I'm going to do this, I need to be all in. In other, in other words, Lord, I know you're calling me into this. The provision is flowing in so that I can make these purchases, and you're bringing the help. And I, I mean, God, you're all over this. But Lord, if I'm going to do this, I've got to learn this stuff, and I've got to get into it, not just walk around the fringes of it. Okay, that's what the scripture means. Good understanding. No, no, I'm not talking global understanding where you know about everything. I'm talking about good understanding in your field of expertise. Good understanding brings favor. The opposite of that is true. Lack of understanding, not knowing your stuff, not being able to talk the talk in your field is going to inhibit your advancement. Mm, praise God. So you, you want to not only know your stuff and have good understanding, preferably you want to be like Daniel, and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, where your mind is illuminated in your field, and you stand at the forefront, and you have the answers that others need, and you, you I mean, either if it's technical, analytical, or whatever, that's your thing. You're like, yeah, let me help you understand that. You can just jump in there and help people with it, and yes, you're going to have to study. Yes, you need to, uh, you know, maybe uh, after, you know, this is not always confined to working an eight-hour job you're going to have to after hours in your own free time dig into it maybe late at night if you have to if you put the kids to bed or stuff like that but if you want to rise to the top these are the things that you have to do because remember God's not saying no God's not saying no for all things are yours included in that along with you know uh, you know contacting the wisdom of Peter Apollos or Paul you know uh, they're contacting their t uh, teachings and connecting with their their ministry and thing like and things like that 
also very heavily in that chapter Paul was talking about the true wisdom of God the wisdom that's above all other so-called forms of wisdom and that's all yours and you could tie into that and swim into that ocean of the wisdom of God and just uh, access everything that God has made available to you he's not holding back he says here it is go for it so you have to stir yourself up stir yourself up because you have a lot of chickens they are very content uh, they're very content to live their life out they're saved they're washed with the blood of Jesus that's fine they're going to go to heaven that's great but when you really when you really feel that God has his hand on your life to do something that will be a blessing to others then make that push and go for it because God says that all things are yours yes you can have it shout right now I can have it Mm-mm. what are you doing you're painting the right image on the inside of your spirit praise the Lord now let's go back to a classic verse Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 has actually been quoted a lot um, by those who would teach along the subject of the power of confessing God's Word sometimes what we would call positive confession and I'm not talking about like New Age stuff uh, although New Agers use it in a selfish sense to try to tap into a spiritual law but all of that's irrelevant when you're not even saved I mean what does it matter if that stuff is even working for you if you don't know Christ you're going to veer off in the direction anyhow because you're going to try to manipulate it for your own personal gain but it is true that this is actually when you look into it this is still the context that it does have to do with having the right image in your heart now Proverbs chapter 23 verse 6 do not eat the bread of a miser what is a miser now a lot of people would think a miser is a poor person who is very stingy with what they have uh, that's not that's not the full picture you and I both know that a miser can be somebody who is very stingy very greedy and can have a ton of money I've I've seen them uh, uh, before I uh, you know when Kelly and I used to live in Southern California because she she was born and raised in Southern California uh, when I lived out there we were married you know people would pull up to garage sales uh, it's I don't know it's very unusual in California uh, I've seen garage sales of course all over America but they were they were extra unusual in Southern California because you could have a garage sale you could have a uh, you could have a family that maybe you know maybe the husband and wife both working full-time only make forty five thousand dollars a year both working full-time and they have they have a home that you know I don't know what like a hundred and fifty thousand dollar home or something like that and that so they have a garage sale and they put all this stuff out there and it's almost all junk but yet in Southern California you'll have people pull up to garage sales in Bentley's and uh, Mercedes Benz S class uh, you know sedans and all kinds of things like that and they'll get out of that car and they'll they'll look and uh, boy they'll just they'll they'll fight you they'll fight you over a four dollar four dollar item trying to get it down to three dollars and they'll and they're very serious about it too and it's just crazy crazy stuff and you know you would think well they've got that much money just pay the four dollars I mean who who cares <laughs> what's that to what does that mean to a person that pulled up in a Bentley I mean it's just silly sometimes what's going on what's going on do not eat the bread of a miser a miser is a person who externally can have great wealth but on the inside they're impoverished they don't have a giving heart even even if they tried to get the words out that would pretend or portray that they do such as we see here do not eat the bread of a miser nor desire his delicacies for as he thinks in his heart so is he now that's been quoted so often for as he thinks in his heart so is he eat and drink he says to you but his heart is not with you the morsel you have eaten you will vomit up and waste your pleasant words why what's going on here he, he doesn't he doesn't want even to share his food with you now he knows culturally particularly back in you know the Middle East uh, biblical days if you had a stranger or you had somebody to drop by unexpectedly then a hospitality was a huge part of the culture back then and if you didn't host somebody give them something to drink or offer them somewhere to sleep or something like that then back then that was like completely unheard of because everybody did that hospitality was just a standard where you know you just help everybody get along and if you ever need it they're going to be there for you so he's trying to do that but then his heart he doesn't want to and he may offer you a plate of hummus 
you know, with some pita bread on the side. And he says, here, I know you're hungry. Go ahead and eat some. But he, he doesn't want you having one slice of pita bread, and he doesn't want you eating any of his hummus. Even if he's got a whole refrigerator full of it, he doesn't want you having any of it. And even, even if he's got $50 million in the bank, he still doesn't want you having any of his pita and hummus. He doesn't want that. Why? He is greedy. He is a miser. He is stingy in his heart. And so what happens is that even when people try to externally still do it right on the outside, it won't work right. Why? The heart is not right. The heart doesn't belong to the Lord. Let me tell you right now why the church is stepping into the initial phases of the various scriptures in the Word of God, not just Old Testament, but New Testament as well, that refer to what many theologians call an end time wealth transfer from the righteous money being moved from the from excuse me the unrighteous or the wicked into the hands of the righteous can I tell you why can I just be flat out honest today and tell you why yes pastor Stephen please do that I, I would enjoy your honesty and your candid uh, opinion on that okay here's why sinners do stupid things with their money okay no no Christian anchored in the word with a heart for God who loves God would go out and do some of the most idiotic wasteful stupid things that Christ, uh, excuse me that unbelievers do with their money opening strip clubs opening bars opening nightclubs just nothing but um, hedonism nothing but paganism nothing but sin opening liquor stores uh, and just on and on it goes or producing vile filthy videos or starting starting TV networks and channels that just splash filth and vomit all over people just total garbage and trash and they do stupid things with their money they spend it on things that that just make no sense and it's just amazing to see the waste and the foolishness of what's done with it oh oh but what would a minister what would a child of God who loves the Lord with all of his heart what would they do with money oh they would do the most important thing they would use it as leverage to keep people from going to hell and endeavor to reach them with the gospel so that they can gain heaven mm -mm. praise the Lord mm -mm. they're not going to take it and go out and open up a casino or something something foolish like that Praise God. That's why the enemy has fought it, but it's going to happen. And the scriptures have prophesied it, and the scriptures cannot be broken. Praise the Lord. So position yourself for that. Position yourself for that. Paint the right image on the inside of your heart and say, I'm a giver. Oh, oh, I know a lot of wealthy people that give. Yes, you'll, you'll read about some of the billionaires making large donations. Did you ever notice none of their donations ever? ever go to the kingdom of God none of their donations ever go to the preaching of the gospel none of them do none of them none praise the Lord hallelujah but God's going to begin to do a work and God's going to put the money in the right hands of the people that will steward it for the advancement of his kingdom and so that the gospel will be preached to all of the world to all of the world hallelujah on every available network it'll be just blasting everywhere all over the world satellites all over the world praise God thank you Jesus and this is this is going to go beyond just Christian networks this is going to go to the point where the Christians are having their payloads of their new satellites taken into space and positioned in space and beaming down messages of the gospel around the world and that way if any any government says well we're going to turn off your network it's like well you can't turn off our you can turn off the networks but you can't turn off our satellite because <laughs> our satellites up in space Woo! praise the Lord hallelujah so my friends God is going to see to it that his word is fulfilled and so we want to have the right image on the inside of being generous of having a a heart where we we see surplus thank you Jesus you know some of you you need to have inside of you as it says as he thinks in his heart so is he you need to have in your heart an image of health pastor Stephen you don't understand how sick I am well you could be really sick but my friends as you spend time in the word 
and the word becomes more real to you than your sickness and Jesus and his anointing becomes more real to you than your sickness then the canvas on the inside of healing that you're painting will manifest and all sickness and disease will fall off and out of your body praise God it's just a matter of painting 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 the right image on the inside not an image of you laid out all the time with a cold compress on your head with another another fever another headache legs propped up you know window shades drawn down and staying there for three days in a deep dark depression no no images like that no we're talking about illuminated brilliant images based upon scripture based upon the word of God you need to paint the right image within your heart because as he thinks in his heart so is he whether it's negative or whether it's positive it's however you work that if you have a negative image that's what's going to extend into your natural life and if you have a positive image based on God's word I'm not just talking about positive be happy you know go around and you know you know it's, it's a good day because it's just you know whatever I'm talking about because of who you you are in Christ and because who God is and knowing that we're going to be with the Lord forever and ever and ever and ever how can you not have come on how could you not have a positive image Woo! praise the Lord thank you Jesus amen and God does not want you to limit him now we have heard that said before that is in the scriptures of course that's something the children of Israel struggled with as they went through the desert went through the wilderness experience there were times they really limited God can God do this yeah yeah I mean we're dying of thirst out here well God can bring water out of the rock ah that's crazy next thing they know water's coming out of the rock anyhow but see in, in many other ways they just they just limited God but my friends there is an anointing right now to go big uh, I'm telling you, I, uh, can't you sense it? God is moving, the Spirit is moving in the church right now. So this is definitely not the right time. Well, there's never a right time, but this is definitely not the time that you would want to be negative or have a little tiny image, you know, uh, you know, of just like going from, from here to here. No, th th this is time to make some moves in the Spirit, praise God. Woo, th this, is, this is the moment this is the moment God's with you and God's moving so in an anointing you need to ask you need to go for it hallelujah praise God you need to have the right image because I'm telling you what we are in the season of giving birth we're in the season of producing we're in the season of God's power in manifestation and it, it's moving praise God it is moving and this ministry is in on that and we're enjoying the blessing and the fruit of that hallelujah so let that anointing come down come over on you splash all over you get drunk in the Lord get drunk in uh, the, the beautiful artistry in the canvas the images that God shows you I'm telling you when you get over in prayer and the Holy Spirit starts start showing you things you write that down and watch how prophecies come confirming uh, as as God sends to you prophets and prophet uh, th those that are that are that are able to flow in prophecy minister to you and that, that they'll give you the word of what God has already shown you in visions and in times of prayer through these inner impressions so you need to paint the canvas with the full colors hallelujah and some of you bless your hearts you need to get a little more color you need a little more vibrant colors and uh, be a little daring hallelujah if you need some inspiration just Go look at God's creation. Look at some of these crazy birds that are out there from the peacock to these, so, these birds that are called birds of paradise. And don't ever forget that the devil did not deck them out because he cannot create. He can only copy and try to emulate. But God, the, the author of creation, he's the one that created DNA and designed these birds with, with colors that are just nothing short of extreme exotic brilliant yellows and uh, you know fluorescent greens and uh, metallic colors it's just absolutely incredible so you need to paint and be free in the spirit and um, you know I'll just be honest this is why Tesla is uh, you know the stock has gone crazy is because and you know a lot of people say well it's not the stock price is not really justified yes it is it is because mr. Musk has thought out of the box he wanted to bring a car forth that's not like other vehicles and it's so different that it has changed the paradigm 
of how a vehicle is actually viewed now and all the other uh, speaking from the uh, American manufacturers perspectives and many of, co of course of the European manufacturers as well they're all playing catch up and the truth is that, they, that they're, they're years behind now I'm not giving a plug for Tesla vehicles or something like that but I'm just saying he is reaping the, the rewards of having thought outside of the box of having used creativity and I have no doubt in my heart that much of his inspiration has come from the Lord. You know, you can go back to the early 1900s and you can look at pictures of New York City, okay, right around, you know, like 1903. And you could look at the main, you know, what would be, um, uh, it'll come to me in just a moment, but uh, that area around Central Park and you've got, uh, you know, just these packed dense streets in Manhattan. You can look in the early 1900s, there's nothing on the streets but horse and buggies, you know, and people being uh, taken around on horse and buggies. And just like 14 years later, same, same shot, same area. There's not one horse and buggy in sight anywhere. It's all cars. And it happened. It happened within the confines of one decade. So things are changing. And since God is with you and the anointing is here for you to paint the canvas the way you want it to be. Well, I would just say go for it, you know. Now, now you and I, we know we're mature. We're not going to be stupid, okay? Do crazy stuff that's way beyond our faith and also would be really weird. You know what I mean? But there is something about class. There is something about elegance. There is something about purity. There is something about the touch of God that's timeless. And that can flow through your heart, through your mind, and you're like, I've got it. I know exactly what we're going to do. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And you know, here in this in this ministry, we have been able to do some things that that really have stretched some things. I mean, if you look at our set on pure gold, when that when that is airing and people look at that, I mean, that looks like literally you're in a real castle from somewhere in Europe and when we were recording, there was a man that had just come over from England and he was actually touring the facility and he saw our studio set and he's like this is incredible he said there's a castle about a half a mile from my house and he said it looks exactly like this studio and he's just like this is just incredible and so uh you know the creativity and, and kelly my wife had a lot to do with the designing of that set and the creativity and um it, it was amazing what went into that but i'll tell you you look at that and it's just like Wow, where did you guys film that at, in Europe? <laughs> we, had, we had a lot of fun with it. Where did that come from, Pastor Stephen? It came out of me and Kelly's heart. We just pulled it out, pulled it out. Let's do this here. Let's put that there. Let's put a stained glass window here. And all of that just, it came out, in a sense, of nowhere. Praise the Lord. And you can rejoice in it, too, because so many of you sewed into that. And every time you see it, you should say, I had a part I had a part in that, and I, I join in those rewards through Christ, praise God, because you certainly do. So my friends, God's moving, and we are creating new things, we're going to do some new things, and it'll be, it will be expressive, it will be beautiful, praise God. And so let that anointing touch you as well. The Lord is not saying no, He's saying yes. So go for it, do it right, do it first class. We, the church has really got to pull out of this ditch of doing things half-baked. And, you know, just, you know, like, well, we don't want to ask God for too much. Uh, you know, that stuff has got to stop where we present these things that the world looks at and laughs at them. And then, you know, then the church looks at the world and the world sets a higher standard. We've got to stop that stuff. And there are uh, good examples where the church actually has the lead on the best in the world in certain areas. So let's really go for it and let's set the standard because this is the Isaiah chapter 60 moment. This is the moment when the light is on us. This is the moment when the, when the wealth of the nations is flooding in, it's moving into the church. And so let's create with beautiful expressions of the Lord. And you know what? It's going to draw many, many people to the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this, this time. We just ask, Father God, that as we think in our heart, that our thoughts in our heart 
which affect our thinking be thoughts that are noble that are pure that are high that are clean that are full of your wisdom that are representative of your eternal wisdom father we thank you we thank you we thank you there's a there's a balance of not having enough and then going too far and now it looks uh, overdone so father we thank you for that wisdom to get it just right we give you praise we give you praise and it will bring many questions it will bring much curiosity from those that are outside or those that are on the fence and really wanting to know they will come in so father we bless you in the name of Jesus let your people flow in the creative anointing let them paint 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 in a beautiful way what it is that you're showing them and we thank you the manifestation is on the way and I prophesy sooner than they think father we give you praise in Jesus name amen hallelujah shout amen now we're going to take holy communion uh, so please grab some unleavened bread and some grape juice if you're watching today's program and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life but you like Jesus you're you're like hey I, I'm uh, Pastor Stephen I'm there's something about this uh, man Jesus I, I don't understand it all but I really like him well Jesus Christ is the son of God the father and he is part of the Godhead deity which is the father the Son who is Jesus and the Holy Spirit and Jesus as God's Son was sent into the world to be born of the Virgin Mary he was raised as a man lived a sinless life so that he could give his life as a ransom for our sins and he went to the cross to pay the penalty for the sins of anybody that would put their faith and trust in him the fact is he paid the sin penalty for everybody but it has to be received the the blessing of that has to be received by faith and if you receive him by faith he will wash your sins away and he'll be your Lord and Savior so if you would like to receive Christ now as your Savior pray this prayer after me say Lord Jesus I come before you as a sinner my sins have separated me from you but Jesus I believe that you died on the cross that you were buried and that you were raised from the dead three days later and that now you're in heaven with God the Father so Lord Jesus I ask you to come into my heart wash my sins away I give my life to you write my name in your Lamb's book of life Jesus I belong to you now thank you for saving me I receive you by faith in your name Amen and amen. Praise God. Those of you who have just prayed the sinner's prayer for the first time to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, I'd love to hear from you. Please email me at contact at stephenbrooks.org. Now, let's take communion together. Father, we thank you for this little piece of bread and the grape juice. We now bless it. Set this apart as holy through prayer. And Father, this is now the flesh and the blood of Christ. And we proclaim his death until he comes. And Father God, that our life is in him. We thank you, Father, that Christ went to Calvary for us. Father, that you gave your own son. And again, we meditate on that, that if you gave Jesus, how much more would you give us these other things that are just all included in the package? So, Father, we say, yes, we're in. We, we receive. Father, we thank you. And as we receive the body of Jesus, Father, we just determined not to put limits on you, but to stay on target, to believe you for the promises that you've spoken to us. Father, thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us now partake of the body of the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put, keep putting the word in into your heart. Faith is of the heart. It's never been intellectual. It's never been of the head. Faith is of the heart. Yes, the mind will come into agreement with it. But faith is of the heart. So to paint the right picture, you have to keep feeding your heart with faith filled material. My friends, stay on the image that you're painting of what inspires you nobody wants to paint something stupid um, uh, I had a lady in my church one time she was on um, bless her heart she was a good lady she loved Jesus but 
had a lot of things she was working her way through, but she, she liked to paint. And, uh, but she had a lot of oppression in her life. And every time she'd show me a painting, I, I, you know, I would just say, that's nice. But I would, you know, in my heart, I just think, out of all the things in the world that you could paint, do you have to paint something stupid like that? I mean, she'd be painting like the most bizarre stuff, like a door. And then it's colored, you know, really ugly. Or like a doorknob. I'm just like, you've got all the things under the sun you can paint. That's all you're going to paint? Something. <laughs> so that, that's because of oppression. When illumination, when light comes, uh, it, it changes your heart. And now you're like, hey, let, let's get some color. Whoa, glory to God. I ain't painting no doorknobs anymore unless it's a golden doorknob or a crystal doorknob or you know, something that's got some beautiful facets on it. Let's take it to a new level. Who praise the Lord. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, God loves us right where we're at, but he just loves us too much to leave us where we're at. He wants to take us forward, but he's not going to do the painting for us. We have to do it. So since we have to do it, let's have fun. Please paint what inspires you. Don't paint something that depresses you. Don't paint something that just makes you frown and stay miserable. Paint what inspires you. Well, Pastor Stephen, I'm afraid to paint that. Well, why? Is that the miracle zone? Is that the thing God told you about? Well, yeah, Pastor Stephen, but only, only God can get me into that. Yes, that's the whole idea. Praise God. Amen. If it doesn't require God, then, uh, you know, you're just, you're staying, you're staying on a level that's too low for you. Remember, you are in the kingdom. Miracles are your inheritance. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus. Father, we've all pulled out the wrong colors of paint at time. And, and Father, we've all have uh, painted images that were probably beneath our potential. So, Father, help us to go higher. Help us to get it right. Help us to paint what inspires us because that inspiration comes from you. Now, Father, for those who may be lost in inspiration, or maybe it's been smothered by a pillow of doubt and unbelief. Let it come off and let it come back to life right now. Father, show them again that beautiful image of where you want to take them for your glory. Show it to them again so they can paint it on the image of their heart. We thank you in Jesus' name. We all shout and say, Amen. Let's receive the blood of Jesus. Praise the Lord. It is true that some of the great saints, particularly, uh, let me go within a certain category for a moment, some of the ones that would be called the Passionist. The Passionist is a group of believers that love the Lord, where their focus is on the passion of Christ, or the suffering of Christ that He went through at Calvary, and the moments leading up to Calvary. And there have been Passionist believers who so loved the Lord and painted that image of what Christ went through for them and so loved him and so worshiped him and books were written about some of these men and women around the world the passionist that when they died the church actually had coroners examine them they'd open up their heart and there on their their hearts would be the cross they, they would find like a cross a, a, an image of a cross somehow superimposed on their heart so, you know, I'm just telling you that what you paint on your heart is what is portrayed externally in your life. Now, for those that really focused on that, they had very holy lives, very, very holy lives. And many of them, you know, were having heavenly visitations and visions of Jesus and angels and all of that good stuff because they knew the power of the cross. They knew that if you lose your life for his sake, you'll really find the life that he has for you. Mm, 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 mm. Praise God. So my friends, it's true. It's been proven. It's uh, even physically, even physically. Hallelujah. Okay. The image is coming back. That inspires you. Get happy, see it, receive it and paint it. And don't ever doubt it again. Thanks for watching. I'll see you back next time. Bye-bye.